Hi everybody, I'm Nikki White, and today we're talking about point shoes. We're going to talk about breaking in your point shoes, and also about three-quarter shanking your point shoes, which some of you may choose to do. Uh, the funny thing about point shoes is that we get them brand new, they look beautiful, um, they're very expensive, and then the first thing we do is eat them to death. So, one of the first things you'll notice about point shoes is they're very loud. So, if you're going to be dancing like in snow, in Nutcracker, or Swan Lake, and you want your shoes to be quiet, you're going to have to go outside to some concrete and literally slam your shoe into the concrete 20 or 30 times. And it might make them a little bit softer, it might make them die a little faster, but they will be more quiet. So that's one way to get them quieter. I don't think I need to do it for you to demonstrate, because it's kind of obnoxious. You just whack it on the ground. It's kind of fun, but it, it's loud. So do it outside and not in your house at 2 a.m. with your neighbors. Yeah, no point you drumming at 2 a.m. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is talk about the box. It comes very round, and when it's too stiff, it can cause bunions on your big toes, your big toe joint. So what we do, what I do, is I put the heel of my hand on the toe and my fingers over the, on the other side, so I cup it like that, and then I squeeze. And then I go to the side, I don't know if you can see, I go to the side and I do the same thing. Other side, same thing. Just trying to get it as flat as I can. The other way you can do it is to stand up and put your heel right there, put your heel on it and stand on it. And that will crunch it and get it flat too. So there goes that beautiful round box that you just got. We'll just do one today. So the other, the other thing you can do is put a palm on either side of it and squeeze it together that way. You're just basically trying to soften it a little bit, so it's just not so, so stiff, right? The next thing I'm going to do is talk to you about the drawstring. So when I put my shoe on, I make sure to have my foot flexed, because when you jump and you plie, it creates that bend and it, it works your Achilles. So your Achilles goes from being passive to active, which means that your foot takes up more space. So I hold the flex. I pull the drawstrings, not too tight, because if it's too tight, it will cut into your Achilles, and that gives you tendonitis. That's no bueno. So you only pull it to where it just gets rid of the gaps on either side. I do one knot, square knot, two knots, and then I cut it, leaving a couple inches. Is that two inches? Yeah. And then that's short enough that I can tuck it under. And if it comes out, it won't be a big deal, but it also still leaves enough room that if I did it too tight, I can loosen it up to there. I, I gave myself two inches of leeway. I can always go tighter, and I can also now go looser. And it's small enough that I can tuck it in, and it won't be bunching up under my toes or anything. Um, the next thing I do is everybody has one foot slightly bigger than the other. So I did the drawstring on my left foot. I would take a pin and I would put an L right on the bottom of my shank, just so I know. And sometimes I date it, sometimes I draw funny pictures, something so I can remember. Sometimes I'll write the name of the ballet that I'm working on so I can look back two years later and be like, oh, I wore these for Alice in Wonderland. I love that ballet. So now we're going to talk about three-quarter shaking. Everybody's arch is in a different place. Um, some people have really flexible ankles, some people have really um, pronounced arch. Like my foot, my ankles are really flexible. You can see that bump there. Maybe this foot. You can see that bump. But I don't actually have a huge, some girls have this huge arch. And in reality, my foot doesn't have that huge of an arch, but this is really flexible. And if I don't three-quarter shank my shoe, then my shank is flat like this. My foot just pops out of my shoe, and then it slips off my heel. So I have to three-quarter shank my shoes so that it forms to my foot. And sometimes I have to cut them down even more than three quarter shanks, depending on the shoe and depending on where your arch bends. So the way shoes come, um, mine are special order, so they already come three quarter shanked. I'll show you that first and then I'll show you a pair that's not three quarter shanked. So they come with this first part, this top, the leather. And if you peel that back, and it's, it's put in there with a the nail, just pull it. If you peel that back, you will see a second shank right there. 
and you can see they already cut it. Otherwise, it would go all the way up to about where the nail is, to where that nail is, to about there. And so if they hadn't have cut it, I would have taken my scissors, some really strong scissors, even though I use these little kid ones and they tend to work fine, and I would have cut it right there, right about there. And it's, you have to be able to gauge. It, before I had them do it my, themselves, I would keep whatever I cut off of one shoe on, shoe on a pair that worked really well. I'd save it in my sewing kit so that I could compare it to the next shoe, measure it, draw it with a line, and then I could snip it. Now, the reason I have a pair of needle nose pliers is because even though they've already three quarter shanked it, this nail is still left in there and that sometimes can dig through the leather and dig in my heel. So I would take my needle nose pliers, I don't know if I'll actually get it now because it's kind of a pain, but I would dig in there, grab the nail and yank it out. It's not serving anything, it's not gonna bother you. Does that make sense? So this pair of shoe, shoes, these are Russian points, so they're, they're different, but they're similar. Same thing. This is the top layer, you peel it back, and there's the shank. This has been like, that's not three quarters. I'm not sure how much that is. That's been cut off just a little bit. If I wanted to go further, which I would with these, I would take my scissors and I would cut right along wherever I wanted it. And it's easy, easy like that. These ones don't have a nail, so I don't have to worry about it. Or maybe they do. Nope, they don't. Last but not least, after you three quarter shank your shoes, you bend them. I peel this back again. I grab my handy trash bag, or trash can. What is this thing? And I hold it over the trash can because the glue that they use, um, when you break it, turns into like fine powder. And if you just do it on the dance floor, <coughs> your dance studio floor, you're gonna get this like dusty gold powder everywhere. And I guarantee you, your teachers are not going to be very happy. So you just hold, you put the leather back down, you hold it, you go back and forth a few times. I even do it in a circle, just bending it exactly where the shank is gone. I don't want to bend down here. <clears throat> Up high, you bend. You can hear it kind of crunching around. And then once it's done, you pull back the leather and you shake it all out. And you just run your fingers all over it, scratch out any of that glue. Because not only does it get all over the floor, but if it gets all over your foot, it hurts. It's like sand. It's like hard sand in your shoe, and it's uncomfortable. So that is my story on breaking in shoes, three-quarter shanking. If you have questions or comments, leave them below, and I will try to answer your questions as soon as I can. Thank you. Happy point shoes.